Hey there, anthropologists. It's Eric with another video here. I thought I'd take a few moments moments here today to talk about um, what is a state, because you'll find anthropologists and social scientists in general tend to really fixate on this concept of the state. And it's really important to understand why we focus on the state as a political entity and why it's so important to social sciences and anthropology in general. Uh, if we want to really break it down, the state is defined, roughly speaking, as having four criteria. The first one being uh, borders or territoriality. Basically, you have to have some sort of way of managing land, right? Um, if you don't have a way of controlling that land, then you're not technically a state in, in the truest sense. The second thing that we need to think about is monopoly of force, whether that's through police or armies, etc. Uh, and this concept goes back quite a ways uh, all the way back to the early 1500s with Machiavelli. Um, hopefully I can display a picture here uh, with my crude editing skills. Uh, Machiavelli basically arguing, and this is also early enlightenment thinking, that the state only exists because we agree as citizens of the state to give up our ability to fight one another and, and you know, uh, move and all that kind of other stuff. And essentially we, we cede that authority to the state. Um, so monopoly of force is the second thing. The third thing is economic control. Now this one is where we can get into a lot of muddy waters, but um, really arguably speaking, you could think of this in your own life and how the state controls the economy. Even when we like to think that, you know, in today's political organization or um, system of capitalism, it's, it's free market. But in reality, the government, especially in the United States, regulates marketplaces. It regulates what you can and can't do, what you can sell, what you can buy, how you can you know, offer prices and all that kind of stuff. So the state has a vested interest in controlling the econ economics of its territory, you know, imports, exports, tariffs. Um, we could get into the complexities there, but they have economic control as well. Uh, and the last thing, which is probably pretty obvious at this point, is there is some sort of centralized authority. So that's the fourth key criteria to make it a state. Now, these concepts, in, in, in essence, you know, you could argue, well, don't we see that in, you know, non-state level societies or, or smaller organizations? So this raises the question of why do we in anthropology focus so much on the state? And probably you could break that down into three main reasons, or at least I could break that down into three main reasons. Uh, and I keep looking down because I've written myself little notes here. Um, <clears throat> the first one is to understand how um, institutions maintain um, power and authority. So one of the reasons we like to look at the state is because you really don't see institutions uh, outside of state level um, political organization. Um, but for the most part, this is where we start to get, you know, sociology is primarily focused on um, institutions of the state or institutions at state levels, that kind of stuff. Um, so populations and how pa power is maintained, um, key philosophers or you could say social scientists that look into how the state maintains power are Antonio Gramsci and um, Michel Foucault. So they focus a lot on how ideology is reproduced and how that ideology leads us to what we think is normal behavior. So, you know, we put on clothes every day and nobody needs to, you know, force us to do that. No one's holding a gun to our head saying that we need to do that. We consider that normal behavior. Um, but there's also interest in studying the state and how it's formed and what leads to sort of this idea in this Machiavellian sense of wh why are we willing to give up arms and control of a, a, a force and allow the state to monopolize force. What would motivate us to do that? So anthropologists have an interest in understanding how states develop. Um, and if you really want to take a deep dive, one of the ones that gets talked about quite frequently is Emmanuel Wallerstein's world systems theory. So that kind of dives into the history of how states form, how bureaucracy is really important to that, um, the codification of laws and, and, and rules. Uh, so there's a lot of interest in, among anthropology at looking at how states are formed, especially in archaeology and, uh, you know, prehistoric cultures, hunter-gatherer studies, looking at how, um, you know, foraging societies are different from state-level societies. And that's kind of segueing into the last reason why I think states are so interesting is that most anthropologists are studying um, culture from an industrialized Western state society. And so it's good to have an understanding of where we're coming from in order to compare that to other non-state based political organizations, such as um, bands, tribes and chiefdoms, and then obviously the state, which, you know, there's the state and then there's everything else. And 
this is where anthropology has a tricky time understanding political organization outside of the state. And this is something that Elman Service uh, tried to do back in the 40s and 50s. That's where we get those, those key terms. You'll probably hear those over and over again in anthropology classes, band, tribe, chiefdom, and state. Uh, chiefdom being sort of a tricky one. Um, what makes it a chiefdom and when is a chiefdom no longer a chiefdom and it becomes a state and that kind of stuff. So sort of how we subdivide political organization based on population sizes, territoriality, et cetera, and et cetera. So the state is a really useful analytical term in order to frame um, culture change, in order to understand institutions, uh, in order to stand, understand these sort of as um, I believe it's Emil Durkheim or it's Max Weber, one of those two guys. I get them mixed up in my head. They're old. Uh, old 19th century social scientists um, calling it the super organic. So these things that are beyond the scope of the individual in terms of um, power and, and and controlling sort of ideology. So that's why we focus a lot on the state in anthropology and in other social, social sciences is because it is a very useful analytical concept and hopefully this short little breakdown helps you better understand what we mean when we start talking about the state. And that's going to do it for today's video. Um, make sure you tune in for future lessons in archaeology or cultural anthropology. And until next time, never stop learning. <laughs> <laughs>